So, as you know, what I've talked about before, Israel put the Ukrainian leader in there and they attempted to stop Russia with a blockade and Russia went through that. Russia corralled those three tugboats and has kept them there and is going to probably put them in jail for two months, as we can see. The Ukraine was ready for this. The Ukrainian government has serious issues. The likability of the president is at an all-time low. And now we see new weaponry and hardware moving into the Ukrainian district. What we see here is an attempt, a bold attempt, for war to be started on behalf of Ukraine against Russia. And it's a matter of look this way, not that way. What's happening, though, at the same time as we see the Ukraine breaking down, we see Iran picking up steam. And if they decide that they're going to launch an attack against Saudi Arabia because Russia is aware of the Ukrainians acting out with intent because of Israel... It would be the best time, the most optimal time, for Iran to launch at Saudi Arabia. And the best way for them to do that would be to make an attack occur in Saudi Arabia against them. When you look at the desert itself, Syria, Israel, Palestine, Hamas, Hezbollah, Everybody down there is supporting their own jihadist movement, and it's a problem. The major problem is Donald Trump. One year before he was even president, he admitted through Pompeo on Chris Wallace on Fox News that he was in that desert working to do what he did. The first place his son Jared Kutcher went was Saudi Arabia to give them the weapons. Those weapons that they used against Yemen that the United States was helping to misappropriate a person's country to take their oil. Now that Syria has been locked up, they don't want Russia to look at Syria and they have their people trapped there and they can't get them out. So they need Russia to look up at a different area. So they're causing a problem with intent. And if a war breaks out between these two countries, Russia, it's not Russia's fault. It'll be Israel's fault, backed by Donald Trump, because Israel's been the main contingent of this. And the leadership of the Ukraine was put in there by Israel. And the Ukrainian presidency was seen directly by Donald Trump. And so we're seeing the franchise take advantage of itself right now in its last desperate attempt to create a war in the desert. And it's terrible. And a lot of people will die. And Donald Trump, you have a chance to pull back from this. You can call up Benjamin Netanyahu and say, hey, listen here, Oracle. Knock it off. You can call up MBS and say, hey, look, stand down. But if you think the franchise is going to help you, Ukraine will die. Ukrainian people will die. Vladimir Putin is a person who believes in his country. And he did not attack them. That strait was wide open until your friends did what they did. Nobody's going to feel bad if the whole city gets wiped out. Mr. Trump, I am so upset at you now, I'm not even going to watch the funeral for George Bush Sr. Because you're going to be there. You're not a Republican. You're not an American. You're a nationalist. And you're putting patriots in jeopardy. This is a patriotic country who loves our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, and our children. And you're willing to murder all of us for your greed. It's a sad day. Shame on you and your family. Shame on the face of your father. Shame. God bless God. You need to stop what you're doing, Mr. Trump, and turn them around. May you get all the blessings you ask for. In the name of God, God bless you. God bless you.